Hello, I'm Ross Atkins. You're watching the BBC News Channel. Now it's time for your questions answered. Well, over the last few hours, you've been sending in your questions on the Chancellor of the Exchequer's economic statement today, in particular concerning the housing market. Rishi Sunak announced the temporary stamp duty holiday costing £3.8 billion, the idea being to stimulate the property market. This will exempt the first £500,000 of all property sales from the tax from midnight. Also, vouchers of up to £5,000 will be available for energy-saving home improvements as part of a wider £3 billion plan to cut emissions. Well, to help us with these questions, I'm joined by the property expert and buying engine Henry Pryor, and also by the founder of BN Media, the property and finance author, Melanie Bien. Thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Appreciate your time. Let's start with two related questions, one from Simon, one from Wendy. Um, Simon says, if we've signed the contract, paid the deposit before March, and are awaiting completion of exchange for our home, and the home being below half a million pounds, would this stamp duty holiday be applicable in those circumstances? Wendy says, my 26-year-old daughter completed her purchase uh, early on in June, paying £15,000 stamp duty. She's a young scientist. She wanted to do right by her sellers, the estate agent, and so on. Will this stamp duty be backdated to lockdown? Um, Henry, let's start with you. Ross, good evening to you. Well, um, the important thing to remember is that the stamp duty holiday, which uh, starts tonight, uh, and runs until the end of the financial year on the 31st of March 2021 is applicable for properties and deals that have completed. You, uh, stamp duty is due on completion, not on exchange of contracts uh, in England and Northern Ireland. Remember, different rules apply in Wales and Scotland. Uh, so in the case of uh, somebody who's exchanged contracts but not yet completed, they should get the benefit of the stamp duty discount uh, and the raising of that limit from 125,000 to 500,000. But unfortunately for the uh, person who's already bought, exchanged and completed, they won't get the benefit. It's not going to be backdated. Thank you for that answer. Simon and Wendy, thank you for the questions. Here's one for you, Melanie. Uh, Roy has written in to say, do the stamp duty changes apply to all or only first time buyers? Oh, good evening. Um, Hi. Well, that that's a good question. I mean, usually stamp duty exemptions are targeted at first-time buyers. Obviously, they have uh, the, the least money to spend on stamp duty. Um, and we obviously want to get them into the housing market because they are the lifeblood and they, they keep the whole system moving. But with these, um, this holiday announced today, it applies to everyone. So if you are buying um, a first your first home, obviously you already um, have a stamp duty holiday up to £300,000. Now you'll have one up to £500,000, but also someone buying a second home or a buy to let or someone buying a property through a limited company will benefit. However, those people who are due um, have a 3% a, a surcharge they would normally pay on stamp duty, duty purchases, that will still apply. So anyone who already has a home and is buying another one will still have to pay the 3% stamp duty surcharge. OK, so Melanie, that's interesting. There's one message here from Simon in Wirral saying, I'm thinking of buying my third property at a price of £80,000. Will I have to pay stamp duty? It sounds like the answer is... Yes. That he will. Yes, yes. he will. Yeah. So up, up from £40,000 up to £80,000, he will have to pay a 3% stamp duty surcharge. OK. Another one here from Jeremy saying, will the government be doing anything further to incentivise the first-time purchase of homes? Henry, that was from Jeremy. I don't think Jeremy's going to have a lot to look forward to, I'm afraid, Ross. Um, the government have done an awful lot today, a lot more than many commentators were expecting. Uh, I think that probably uh, this is the, our lot and the housing market will rumble on through the remainder of this year and into March next year on the basis of what we've already been offered today. Um, actually, Jeremy asked a second question. I mean, you could write a whole book on this, I think. But he says, how will COVID-19 impact the housing market? Melanie, <laughs> lots of different ways, I imagine. <laughs> Yeah, if, if only we knew. Um, well, the Chancellor said today, um, part of his response, why he's introducing this stamp duty holiday, is because house prices have been falling. And we saw um, with the Nationwide and Halifax house price indices that prices have started falling. Um, and it's obviously doing something to try and arrest that fall. But of course, um, it's not really house prices that matter as much. It's transactions. It's people actually um, transacting and moving and you know, so much of the economy um, rests on the housing market is so important. It employs so many people, you know, if you're getting in builders, removals menu, 
so much is, mm. is based on it. So I think that is, is, is more why they're doing it. And if we look at this in the past tense, Henry, what can we say the impact has already been? Well, there's no doubt that uh, press speculation over this last weekend uh, unsettled buyers in particular, sellers and estate agents. Uh, there was uh, an unfortunate uh, influ in inference that perhaps uh, this wasn't going to be introduced until the traditional budget in the autumn. Uh, the Chancellor has acted upon that and he's uh, very much stiffened everyone's resolve, so it is effective immediately. If we look back, Wilson, see, uh, this is not the first time that governments have uh, provided stamp duty holidays. They've done so in the past. Uh, it hasn't always had a dramatic impact on the number of transactions. It has uh, either brought transactions forward or indeed postponed them, depending on uh, what the tax was going to do and trying mm. to do. So it remains to be seen whether this is going to have a dramatic effect on the market. Uh, but we're all optimistic that we'll at least get the market moving further and faster. And as Melanie says, that we're going to see more transactions because the housing market, as she rightly says, drives the high street economy. And that's what the Chancellor is trying to seek to do today. Now, there's an interesting question here. You've alluded to this already, Henry, but it would be good to clear this up. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Akimenko have written in to say, does the stamp duty holiday automatically apply in Scotland? It doesn't apply in Scotland. Scotland, uh, the Scottish Assembly will, Scottish Parliament will make their own decisions in due course. Uh, they've traditionally followed Westminster's lead, uh, but they will keep the Scots hanging on. The Scottish housing market has only just reopened. You may remember that you, the English housing market opened in mid-May, but the Scottish housing market's only just reopened. And the rules in Scotland and the rules in Wales are different from England and Northern Ireland. Melanie, I can see you nodding there. You, you, clearly, it's important to emphasise the, the different experiences of buyers and sellers in different parts of the UK. Yeah, quite. Um, we've all sort of got our own housing markets and, and they're run slightly differently. But England and Northern Ireland, these, these rules um, announced today, this holiday will apply. Um, and as Henry says, Scotland will probably follow suit and, and Wales, I imagine, as well. OK, um, next one here from Paul, uh, getting in touch via Twitter, uh, saying, with the new stamp duty holiday, are you able to confirm that people buying above half a million pounds will also benefit from this? Uh, Melanie? Uh, yes, they will. So the first £500,000 will be exempt and then the bit above they will pay the usual stamp duty on. So um, in, in that example, say someone was buying a house for £600,000, there'd be no stamp duty due on the first 500000 There would be 5% charge on the next 100000 so they would pay 5% stamp duty, which would be a significant saving on, on what they would have paid um, before today. Thank you very much for that answer. Paul, thanks for getting in touch on Twitter. Now, here's one for you, Henry, from Russell, wanting to know whether this holiday on stamp duty applies to landlord purchases. Well, this is something that's caught much of the industry by surprise, Ross, and it has been hotly debated on social media uh, since the Chancellor sat down just after lunchtime, having made his announcement. Because bizarrely, whilst other stamp duty changes historically have been made in a way to encourage first-time buyers in particular the Chancellor, despite having said that his measures today, not just with housing, but across the economy, were there to designed to try and help particularly the young who have been perhaps most impacted by COVID-19, these changes today will apply to everyone. So whether you are an investor, whether you are buying a second home, whether you are buying your first home, the first half million pounds will be mm. exempt until the 31st of March. Other people who are buying properties of more than that will trouser, will pocket the, the £15,000 mm -hmm. saving, and then, as Melanie has explained, pay the additional stamp duty due on the balance. But this is not something that uh, is specifically going to help first-time buyers. Indeed, it will mm -hmm. disadvantage them compared to where they were just 24 hours ago. But, Melanie, presumably the calculation from the government is they just want as many sales, as many purchases as possible, whether that's from first-time buyers or others. Well, it does suggest that, the fact that they have open, opened it up to everyone. They just want to get those transactions going. But as Henry said, the trouble is, you know, landlords have deeper pockets than first-time buyers. So if a landlord and a first-time buyer are going for the same property, um, basically the landlord has got more firepower. And we've also, I mean, we haven't touched on this yet, but mm. it's quite hard getting a mortgage at a high loan-to-value. So traditionally where first-time buyers would be buying at, say, 90% loan-to-value, those mortgages are few and far between. So they're, they're already struggling to get the finance they need. If they're up against the landlord who... 
like I say, has more firepower, then it will not go in their favour. Well, let's talk about mortgages a little bit. Is the government putting in place measures to, to support the provision of mortgages to first-time buyers, Henry? government hasn't talked about it today. There may be more announcements. The Chancellor was explicit that this was not the only solution to COVID-19 and the problems that the UK economy and individual citizens are facing. There may be more as the year weighs on. When we get to the autumn statement in due course, he may have more ideas. And indeed, we very much hope he will. As Mel has just explained, first-time buyers, the lifeblood, the foundations, if you will, of the housing market have been seriously disadvantaged by this announcement today. And whilst the government will hope that there will be more transactions, we're expecting transaction numbers through 2020 to be down by perhaps as much as 40 percent. That's going to have a massive impact on this, on the tax take that uh, stamp duty provides, 2 percent of the entire tax take that the Exchequer receives. It's also going to have a massive impact, too, on those who were hoping to buy a house this year, their first home perhaps getting onto the lowest rungs of the housing ladder, and were hoping that they might be able to settle down and get themselves sorted by Christmas. There are a lot of question marks that, that flow from this. That we are way, way, way out from the woods yet. All right. Now, uh, BBC News Channel viewers can be relied on to take us into lots of interesting areas. Here's a good one from Kelly on Twitter saying, what happens if a property developer has been offering stamp duty contributions as part of an incentive to buy a new build? Will they still be required to honour that, Melanie? Mm, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Because that's a sales incentive to encourage people to buy the, the new property. Uh, Obviously, that person now is not paying the stamp duty, so I would have thought the developer wouldn't feel that they had to offer um, a, a discount to reflect that. Or whether they could still, you know, offer some sort of discount mm. to um, to keep the first-time buyer happy or the, the buyer happy, I don't know. But I wouldn't have thought they'd be obliged to do so. So, Henry, a good day for developers too. A very good day for developers. It's something that I'm sure we're going to see in the newspapers and across the BBC in the next coming in the coming days, Ross. Because uh, with the exception of one of the top ten national house builders, the vast majority, nine out of ten, uh, are building a product that traditionally sells for less than half a million pounds. They've had a very good day, and as a result, they've seen their share price. And for most of these listed companies, increase significantly. Mm. It's going to be very interesting to see whether that plays out and whether the government are going to admit that that was perhaps an unintended consequence and whether, as Mel says, first-time buyers are actually going to find that if developers, for example, are incentivizing them to buy their product, they're going to get that kickback in their pocket rather than being left for shareholders of house builders. Melanie Henry, you're doing very good at taking on all comers here. I've got two more for you. One I think you've already answered, but I just want to be clear because so many people are, are coming back to this. Uh, P. Banerjee says, I want to buy an additional property to let. Will I be eligible for this stamp duty exemption? And Melanie, I think we've been clear on this. They will be. They will be, but yeah. you will still have to pay the 3% surcharge. Got it. OK, now here is a fascinating issue. Uh, this from Stefan um, saying, how do these new rules apply to shared ownership properties? My son's a first time buyer of a 40 percent share of a new build flat valued at 600,000. He's paying 240,000 for his share. What stamp duty will he pay if he pays any under the new rules? Henry, do you want to take that first? Yeah, I mean, this is a proper hospital pass because not only <laughs> has the government not yet clarified exactly what the rules are going to be for shared ownership, but they are more complicated for a very good reason. Shared ownership properties, historically, uh, if you bought a property, you had t uh, two choices of how you paid your stamp duty. You either based it on the total sum of the value of the property at the time, or you could elect to pay in instalments because with a shared ownership property, you buy traditionally additional lumps of that property as you live in the home. So we're waiting to see exactly where the details suggest, but it, it, it looks very much as though mm. the situation will be exactly as it was before. Because the threshold has been lifted to half a million pounds from £125,000 for the zero rated, that may make a difference as to what people elect, to which of those options they elect mm. to pay. But at the end of the day, we need to wait, I'm afraid, until we see exactly what the Exchequer tells us in the detail when they publish it, almost certainly tomorrow. And I've got one last question. It's one of my own to finish up with. It's one that uh, we can't answer definitively, but it's worth asking all the same. Is this enough? Will it work? The housing market's under huge pressure. Rishi Sunak is billing this as a major intervention. Is that your assessment of it? Melanie first. Um, I 
think it's a good stab in the right direction. He's obviously listened uh, to to the industry. He's seen what's going on. He wants to, you know, I mean, he's announced a lot of measures today. It's not, not just about housing. So I think, you know, it, it's a step in the right direction. Whether it does have the desired effect, only time will tell. It should result in more transactions, but will those be the first time buyers we need transacting or will it be landlords taking advantage of, of the stamp duty holiday? We'll have to wait and see. Henry? I don't mean to be pessimistic as we wrap this up, but I'm afraid that the housing market across the United Kingdom, in the individual countries, uh, in, and, and in England in particular, stamp duty is uh, the biggest impact is in London and the southeast, that the nation's housing crisis rolls on. What we need are, new, are homes for people who traditionally have been unable to afford to buy or to rent homes. There's nothing in these policies that's going to change that. Whether it indeed increases the number of transactions remains to be seen. We're still expecting the market to be very thin through 2020, but there is a market today if you want to buy and sell. Mm -hmm. The state agents tell us that they're very, very busy, and we'll see exactly what's happened to prices by the time we get to late summer, early autumn. Whether the market crashes, I doubt, but prices, certainly as far as people like the Bank of England are concerned, are going to slip. Whether this uh, uh, whether this help from the Chancellor today is going to make up for that and will encourage people to take that first step remains to be seen. Henry, Melanie, it's been invaluable. Thank you very much indeed for taking on all these questions coming in from BBC News Channel viewers and, of course, all of you who sent in questions. Thank you very much as well indeed. That's, um, uh, we've learned an awful lot thanks to the different issues that you raised. There was Henry Pryor and Melanie Bean, and you've been watching Your Questions Answered.